dialing in. Today we have Angus Luffman, uh, Managing Director from Equifax, uh, dialing in just to talk about uh, some of the things that people may or may not know about credit reporting companies, particularly in relation to getting a mortgage, but also in the wider sense as well on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks, Angus, for dialing in. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about sort of your role at Equifax and also kind of what Equifax does um, for, for the community at large, really? Great, and great to be with you today, Rupert. Yes, um, I'm the Managing Director for Equifax here in New Zealand. Equifax operates in 24 countries around the world. And at our core, and at our core of what we do here in New Zealand is we um, help um, lenders make better credit decisions and help consumers um, understand what's on their, on their credit file, um, among other things. But that's really core in what our business does. And the things we do to help lenders make credit decisions is because we compile data about um, consumers in terms of their applications for credit, um, whether they've um, defaulted on credit and also um, account information and how they're going with their repayments. And credit is really defined in um, uh, mortgages or home loans, um, car loans, credit cards, personal loans, telecommunications and utilities accounts. And there's some, some others, but broadly that that's what we capture. And we capture a, a whole series of data um, that is credit data uh, that allows uh, that allows lenders to um, make those decisions as, and they look at a credit file as part of their process of looking at all the data you you submit um, uh, for a credit application. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone inevitably is going to have <laughs> have one done eventually, whether they're applying for a, a phone bill or or uh, a mortgage or a, a debt consolidation or whatever level, uh, they are going to come across this sooner or later. So really important to understand kind of how that data is compiled and and what is there for them. And and one of the um, you know sort of in our, our chats uh, beforehand, one of the things I really latched onto was that um, comprehensive credit reporting that that. Uh, positive credit reporting that came through in uh, 2013. Um, when I first heard about it, I'd, I'd sort of been a broker for about two years at that point, And I thought, oh, this, this doesn't sound like a good thing. But actually, it is a great thing because, well, well tell us a bit about it, actually, and you can sort of explain from your point of view. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look, look for a long, long time, um, New Zealand was one of the few countries in the world that only allowed um, a credit file to contain information that was negative or adverse about consumers. And so it, it fit, apart from capturing applications, it only captured if you had defaulted on the loan. And then, particularly in the case of a default, that stayed on your file for up to five years. And so if a lender comes and checks that default, uh, checks a file, they find a default, and that's all they can see in the last five years, that doesn't give them a lot of room about making a decision. Um, what positive credit reporting allowed or comprehensive credit reporting is it allowed additional information to be captured about the accounts that you hold, um, the, when they opened, and then how you're meeting repayments in those accounts. And, uh, and they're measured every month. And, and it's, it's only the minimum monthly payment, I should point out. It's not if you're making a full payment. So that minimum monthly payment that, might be on your, that will be on your statement. And by doing that, um, you then get a more recent, more up-to-date and a more complete picture of the consumer's credit profile. And particularly for those who did have a default on a file, it means that um, instead of waiting five years for that to go off a file, if that's going to be a reason for a lender not to give a loan, um, the more recent um, payment or credit behaviour that the consumers exhibited by just repaying their bills and their credit lines on time can be taken into account. And so that consumer can um, recover their situation far, far quicker, better access to mainstream credit, and, and ultimately um, allow them to use credit to make progress in their life. And that's what credit really does. Yeah, I mean, it really gives the, the lender, I was going to say the bank, but the lender, a perspective on the overall yep. view of it. And and moving, if you can move down the, uh, or up the chain of, of uh, lenders, uh, you can save yourself some some big money, right? Like we're talking thousands per year that uh, if you can prove sooner rather than later that you are actually a good person, you might have had a blip back in, back yep. in the day, but... It is a great thing, yeah. So um, it, it, 
Yes, and it, look, it it does a there's a few things. So, for firstly, it supports um, lenders' product innovation, so they can they're in a better position to offer pricing on the basis of risk. Okay, so your so the score will play into that, and that means they could offer a sharper price for credit based on risk, um, and. To, to, in the industry you're in, Rupert, what, what it's really interesting here is that the core thing we really see in our working with the broker industry is that credit reports really can help brokers make decisions about where they might path a loan. And that again can come off that credit profile, be it the file or the score that summarised the credit file to help them make decisions about, well, where, what's going to be the best placement and the most um, you know, appropriate product um, to put a con to line a consumer up or their customer with um, at the end bank. And so it, <clears throat> it in the end, I guess none of us should be surprised that um, better and more complete information can um, help better decisions and better outcomes for consumers. And, and that's what it's really about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, often people want to check their own uh, credit report. I know you guys have an awesome uh, website, uh, mycreditfile.co.nz. Um, so it's the one I use. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. We look. We we yeah appreciate that, Rupert. Look, we would we would encourage um, consumers to to check their credit file regularly. Um, it's going to have a history on it of all the credit activity you've had with other applications or your current accounts um, uh, that are, are going to be listed there. Um, and by checking that credit file, you know it's in our interest, in everyone's interest, that that information is up to date and accurate. So if you see something on a credit file that you don't believe is accurate. There are means to raise that up, uh, to, to make contact with your lender, the lender who put that information there or with Equifax. And we can help in, um, in terms of verifying that information or checking that information with the lender um, because we all um, we want that information to be correct. The other thing that we would advise is, you know, um, know what your credit commitments are, stay on top of your bills, pay your bills on time. And, and really importantly, if you get in trouble, um, uh, in, in financial terms, then get in touch with your lender early in the piece. They're going to be better positioned to help you the earlier you get in touch. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really important to address that early. And and people often sort of bury their head in the sand um, when they're getting behind. And and it's look, it's been a rough year for for a lot of people. And and uh, I think if you can control that credit report in the next sort of five to seven years are going to be a lot easier. You can, you can stay in touch. We had one recently where a um, client found they had a, a debt registered with IRD. Um, it, it turned out to be not, not correct. It's been put there by mistake and it was solved really easily. But yep. but they found that out by checking their re report. And, you know, uh, obviously IRD are a big um, machine so they can kind of correct things a lot easier, I think. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's really important to know what's on there and to address it fast before it becomes an escalated thing right yeah and 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 so from our perspective this is a, a, your credit profile and having a healthy credit profile is part of um you know people being able to live their financial best and, and really that's our mission is to help people and businesses live their financial best so yeah can't encourage enough um just know what's there go to mycreditfile.co.nz um you can request a copy of file it's free uh, and you can get a copy of your score or two um, and um, know what's there. And, yeah. um, and you can do that regularly. Uh, and you can also monitor your file ongoing if you want to. So you could, if was, there's activity on your file. I just say that I, I, I use that. So you've got the yeah. monthly check. It's a really nice thing in this world of kind of scammers using IDs and things. And um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, what's a my credit alert, isn't it? It's, uh... Yeah, it's, it's a my credit <clears throat> alert. And it's in, in simple terms. When, if there's an application for credit um, made um, that goes against your file, then you really want that to be you. <laughs> but, if it's, yeah. uh, but if you get this alert and you don't know about it, then clearly you want to be on top of it because um, the, the possibility that that's, um, the, uh, the, <clears throat> that that could be made in terms of an ID takeover or more fraud case, it just allows you to monitor the file. So um, it, it's it's just a good one to monitor. It just doesn't happen a lot, but um, people do monitor their files. It, it, I've seen a couple of instances with partners using ID as well, and, and I'm, I'm sure your war stories are <laughs> really really epic. But like, just any any monitoring of your credit report is, is well worthwhile. I think, isn't it? 
Yeah, I think just, and, uh, you know, we'd strongly, <laughs> strongly encourage um, that people manage their own credentials regardless. You know, always mm. manage your own credentials, right? Mm. Okay, so yep. building up your uh, credit score, what, what sort of actions, apart from obviously monitoring and, and, uh, and, and checking, what sort of things can you do to help get you get a good score? Um, uh, if you... Yeah, so a credit is sort of just to um, unpack the sort of <laughs> what a credit score is about. Um, in the end, the score just reflects the information that's on your credit file. So um, the good information is going to give you a good score <laughs> in, in really simple terms. Uh, and so... Um, What's important is, uh, firstly, obviously, check your credit file. But it, the, the really great thing about positive and, or comprehensive credit reporting is that it allows you to build up that good history um, really quickly. So generally, um, paying your financial lending commitments on time, paying your telecommunications and utility bill on time is all stuff that's going to um, build up a credit score. Second one particularly positive credit reporting. Um, and I think you mentioned earlier, Rupert, just about everyone should have this at some point. Um, having a credit profile is good for you <laughs> um, because particularly positive credit reporting, generally, um, if lenders don't see having anything there, then that's when, when you go to apply, not having a previous history means they've got to go through a different process. It doesn't mean you're not going to get a loan. It just means they've got to go through a different process. Um, so, um, if you've got an account and you're using it, then um, that good positive credit profile is good for you. Equally, another good thing for your credit file is if you have an account and you are not using it, close it. Yes. Um, closing, closing an account that has um, good positive history on it is a really good contribution to the fact that you're a stable and good credit risk. Uh, and so that would be the other advocacy piece. And the useful thing there is that it can still stay on the file for a period of time. So that can get reflected in the score, even though you've you closed the account. So th there, there are a few tips along with the usual thing of then just knowing, knowing what's on your file and, and knowing about your commitments. Um, I've heard, you know, a, a lot of people think they need to take out a credit card sort of based on that to create a credit report. And I think what we're saying here is that, you know, just the the more gentle way of doing it is to you know, use your typical sort of phone bills and, and yeah. other things like that. You don't necessarily need to create debt to create a credit score. No, no. And That's so, the important thing. Yeah, so I, I think it's a really important point to clarify, Rupert. No, mm -hmm. we're not advocating... You know, I'm not, a, not certainly not advocating creating unnecessary credit as part of that. Um, in the end, your credit file is going to reflect life stage, and so yep. generally that'll start with a telecommunications or a or a utility bill um, that can progress to credit cards. It could be a credit card early, it could be a personal loan because you got a car first. Um, it can come yep. through a whole range of things. In the end, what happens on your credit file can often mirror the stage of life that you're at. Um, mm. The main point is when you take on those, when you do do that. Um, be clear that you can meet the obligations when you when you um, open those accounts. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's um, but yeah, certainly the fact that you've got a previous credit history plays into um, decisions about um, future loans. Mm, yeah. Hey, so let's talk a bit about we're a, we're a little bit past it now, but COVID, uh, mortgage deferrals, and how yep. they're reflected on the. Um, uh, credit reports yep. um, because, you know, some people got nervous. They, they weren't essentially paying their mortgage. Did that show up as a default or what were the arrangements with the banks? Yeah. So we, we moved really quickly. Um, Equifax and as an industry to make sure that the credit files were reflected um, reasonably, uh, reasonably in term, be, with the mortgage payment deferral scheme that was put in place. It was agreed with the banks that, if the data was registered in a certain way, that wouldn't be wouldn't impact the score. The only the only caveat we put on that at the time, or the sort of condition, and everyone agreed to this, was provided you're up to date on your payments when you took out a deferral, then that wouldn't be reflected on your score. Obviously, if you're already if they were already behind on payments, that's already impacting the score it's in any case. Not to do with COVID, right? That's, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's already, it was <clears> pre-COVID. Um, so we saw quite a big influx of those um, come in. Uh, they peaked it just for a bit of background. They peaked in May, and they've generally tailed off since May. Um, and, uh, and and so they're they're there um, to help manage that 
deferral period and to reflect the fact there is an agreement that the consumer, whilst they're under deferral, um, does not need to meet any payments. And so therefore, that doesn't impact their credit score. Mm. I think from a mortgage broker's point of view, um, while it does show up, I think it shows up as an in on the on the payments. Is that right? For the, uh, That's correct. The, it's no, yeah. no payment required is how mm. it shows up. Yep. What's important about that is that even if you've come off deferral, you will need to show the bank how things have changed and improved because you've obviously at some point had some um, some adverse sort of issue with your employment. So if you're applying for a job, uh, applying, for, applying for a mortgage now, then you know you just need to think about uh, explaining that and showing that. So that's um, that's really important and being aware that, that will show on your credit report, although not adversely affected. <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I think the generally um, it's the, the the scheme has been extended given the second lockdown. It got extended in August for another six months, roughly out to March 20, um, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, consumers make the choice about contacting the bank about that, um, and and then they can also make the choice about when they come off those deferrals. So we've seen quite a few consumers come off, and yeah. so that means they you know this, they believe in the stability that they've got around them and they're getting on with making their repayments. Uh, there are others obviously staying in deferral at this point in time. So, um, and, and so that, that's just, that's really the stage they're up to. Um, but the treatment that we do on the credit file remains consistent throughout. Mm. It's so great to hear that people are voluntarily coming off mortgage deferral. Look, there's, there's no issue if you're still in strife, um, staying on it, but there is a temptation right to just kind of let it, let it cruise on so that's that's great to hear that you're seeing data flow through from that yeah and, and I, I think the one the thing that's good about it rupert is that it indicates um consumers are being proactive about their financial circumstance we more generally we have seen um new zealanders be pretty circumspect um through this period right so they are mm. um, meeting repayments um the, we, we look at across the entire, all the lending products <clears throat> at the overdues, or we call them arrears, but overdues. So those who have got missed payments, they are at record lows. Right? So that, that means amazing. people have been making payments. And at the same time, we've seen credit card utilization drop in sort of core stats that we get the, you know, the public statistics from the Reserve Bank. So New Zealanders are being really circumspect through this period and, and, um, and that includes, I think, also investing in, you know, they're investing in their homes at the same time. There's commentary around that. So um, that's really positive to see because it also says that people are being proactive around the situation, um, whether they're going, going on to deferral, coming off deferral, or what they're doing with their spending and meeting their current repayments. Mm, perfect. Cool. So just to wrap up, have you got sort of maybe four or five tips for a consumer person to really help with their kind of credit file and credit report? Yeah, so I, I repeat them definitely what I said before. I think it's, a, so firstly, um, go to mycreditfile.co.nz um, to get a copy of your credit file. It's free, it's also got your score. Um, know your financial commitments, um, have a budget and plan to meet those financial commitments. And, and really critically, um, reach out and get help and do that early if you need to. Uh, and uh, because in the end, your lender can help you far more readily if they are, um, if they're the earlier they are informed in that process. And I think the, so, so I think that's a really key call out and that's just part of managing um, your financial best um, uh, in the best way you can. Mm, perfect, all right, thanks. That was Angus Luffman, Managing Director from Equifax. Uh, thanks for dialing in today, that was Brilliant. Thank you, Rupert. Really appreciate it.